So, this is the course on intelligent control. Today, we will have the lecture 1 of module 1 neural networks. What is a neural network? What you are looking at human brain, a structure of human brain and it may appear in the beginning or at the very outset it may appear that it is a very homogeneous substance, but in reality you see it has various diversities. Each section of brain they function differently, they have different functionality. And the field of neural network, artificial neural network, although may not have any connection with the real neural network in real sense, nonetheless the field of artificial neural network is inspired by the studies in real neural network and real neural networks are sitting on this brain. There are very complex connections among the neurons of this brain that you are looking at and the researchers over the time have developed various models of neural networks just by studying by this uh, studying this human brain. Look at the a complex structure of connection among neurons. You can see these are all neurons and each neuron is connected to other neuron through these connections in the internal connections which we will call as dendrites and the whole structure is very complex. What is a neuron? Neuron is the basic processing unit in a neural network sitting on our brain. You can see this is the structure of neuron where this is the nucleus, this is the cell body and these are all dendrites and this is axon. Axon is like output node of the neural network and these are all inputs, they carry signals from other neurons. Such neurons when they are connected with other neurons, they give rise to processing of information in a unique way inside the brain. When one neuron is connected with another neuron, they are connected through synaptic junctions. Again the dynamics of this synaptic junction is complex. You can see there is signal input from the action of a neuron and through synaptic junction an output is actuated which is carried over through dendrites to another neuron. So, here these are the neurotransmitter. It has been observed that as we learn from our experience, these synaptic junction they are either reinforced or in the sense they behave in such a way that the output of synaptic junction may excite a neuron or inhibit the neuron. So, this reinforcement of synaptic weight is a concept that has been taken to artificial neural model. The brain that we showed this brain consists of 10 billion nerve cells or neurons. Each neuron is connected to other neurons 
through about 10,000 synapses. So, that is it may not be an exact figure, but an estimation. While saying so, let us look at some of the properties of the brain or neural networks inside the brain. The properties tend to degrade gracefully under partial demise. For example, a part of the brain as we saw before, if this part of the brain becomes dysfunctional, then another part of the brain takes over the function of this. That is, the damage of this part of the brain will not completely destroy the total functionality of the brain. Brain will continue to function and while functioning the healthy part of the brain tries to take over the functionality of the damaged part. This is a very important property of real neural network or real brain. Second one, it can learn from experience. This is one of the very key property of the brain that through synaptic junction reinforcement the brain learns. The, as I said, healthy portions of brain can learn to take over the functions previously carried out by the damaged part. The another property is it performs massively parallel computation extremely efficiently. For example, complex visual perception occurs within less than 100 millisecond. Imagine a artificial machine or a computer trying to remember or trying to recollect a image or trying to recognize an image takes a long long time whereas brain does that job within an order of 100 millisecond this is something unique to brain that how parallelly massive computational activities are being carried on. So, as I said you earlier, this massive parallel computation is because of this complex connection, parallel connection among neurons. And the final one, it supports our intelligence and self-awareness. Of course, nobody knows the actual basis of intelligence and self-awareness like all of you must be very aware about your own experience when you try to solve a problem at some point of time you solve the problem and at some other point of time you fail to solve it. From where the intelligence comes to solve that problem? So, this is something we have not still answered, although scientists believe this ha brain is the source of intelligence, but we are not very clear where this intelligence sits. Similarly, self-awareness, when I solve the problem, I am very much aware about the problem that I am going to solve or when I see a image, I am very clear that I am perceiving the image. So, this is the issues, these are the issues that has not been answered even in a real neural network. Nobody knows where from intelligence comes and where from comes self-awareness. Now, I give you an comparison between a brain and a computer. As I said you, the brain has 10 to the power 10 approximately the nervous cells or neurons and each neuron is connected to other neurons through around 10 to the power 4 synaptic weights. So, in that way total number of synaptic weights 
sitting in our brain is approximately 10 to the power 14. This is just approximate, not exact figure. Whereas, in our computer we have a transistors whose order is 10 to the power 8. The element size of a synapse is 10 to the power minus 6, whereas in computer the transistor size also 10 to the power minus 6 unit. Energy that are being consumed by our brain is 30 watt, whereas the CPU in a computer also consumes 30 watt, but the contrast is processing speed where the normal frequency of a neuron, the operational frequency of a neuron is 100 hertz, whereas the operation of a CPU is in the form of giga hertz, pretty fast. But as I said you, although a computer has such fast speed, traditional computer, However, when it comes to certain processing like pattern recognition, language understanding, brain is very fast. Although present day computer has almost taken over the human operations uh, in terms of you know multiplication, arithmetic calculations, you know, problem solving, but there are certain fields like pattern recognition, language understanding, brain is very fast. Then when we compare in terms of learning, the ability to learn is very much there in a human brain. Uh, although we have very uh, little idea about how we learn, we have some ideas, but not in completeness. Like a small baby, when she grows the way she learns things so fast. Probably we have not developed a robot and or artificial machine that learns like a little baby that grows and learns. So, in that sense if you compare we have not developed a machine that really learns like the way we learn. And of course, as I said you intelligence and self awareness. First of all we do not understand these subjects how they come about. Uh, although they are there with us, but these features are absent in artificial machine. We talked about the brain, the real brain of a human. It is not homogeneous, you know it has various reason cortex, midbrain, brain stem, cerebellum, these are various parts of the brain. Each part of the brain has many regions like you know you go to cortex, I think the, this is the major processing area in the brain and in the cortex you have visual cortex, auditory cortex like that. There are various regions and each region there are many areas like for example, one of the region of cortex that is visual cortex that has been studied in detail, researchers have studied and they have found out around 10, 10 to 11 processing stages in this visual cortex, because this is the most studied uh, region in human brain, because visual processing that has attracted the attention of researcher at large. And these stages they have identified like that there are 10 stages and the connections they have found that there are connection called feet forward that is for example, the stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4 and so forth. So, we have been able to identify that there are connection in feet forward manner stage 1 to stage 2, stage 2 to stage 3 so forth and also feedback manner that is stage 3 to stage 1, stage 3 to stage 2 like that. So, what we gave in this lecture until now some idea that what is the neural network, real neural network. As I said you 
brain is very complex. We have very little idea about the brain, although as I said we have understood some of the properties of the brain through you know studies uh, during the last century. So, based on the studies researchers have tried to develop an artificial neural system and the objective is to create artificial machine and these artificial neural networks are motivated by certain features that are observed in human brain. As we said earlier parallel distributed information processing the brain consists of 10 to the power 10 approximately nerve cells and they are connected among each other in a very complex manner and this each neuron is a processing unit each processing unit is connected to other processing units simultaneously one unit is connected to another 10 to the power 4 units approximately. So, that gives the, the connection structure of the real neural network a structure called parallel and distributed structure. So, information processing is being carried out inside the brain in parallel also in a distributed fashion. It is not centralized like CPU that you see in a real neural network uh, sorry uh, artificial computer. In artificial computer your computation takes place centrally in central processing unit which is different in its architecture com in as, com uh, as com in comparison to the brain neural network. High degree of connectivity among the basic units connections are modifiable based on experience learning is a constant process and usually unsupervised, learning is based only on local information, performance degrades gracefully if some units are removed. So, these are some of the properties that we have seen in real neural network. Now, can we bring these properties while developing artificial neural network models. So, that is a field. So, now being biologically inspired we are talking about a field called artificial neural network and we have set some agenda. How do we build a thinking machine or a learning machine which has the capability or which can mimic the, the abilities of biological organism like a human being. Okay. So, now let us go to the most basic computational unit in a artificial neural network obviously, it has to be an artificial neuron. And this artificial neuron has three basic element nodes, weights and activation function. This is a node, these are input signals between input node and output node there are synaptic weights w 1, w 2, w 3, w 4, w 5, w 6 there can be as many weights. And these weights are multiplied with the signal as they reach the output unit, where the output is simply sum of the signal multiplied with the weights. And then this output goes through an activation function, this is f. So, what we are talking about artificial neuron 
a simple basic processing unit. As I showed you on the slide, we have an output node. At this output node, whatever the signals reach, let my signals be x 1, x 2, x n and then I put an activation function here and then I have y. So, as you can see here, I can easily write down these are weights w 1, w 2, w n. So, obviously, the total signal that is reaching here is summation w i x i i equal to 1 to n. This is your total output reaching here and you activate this total input by a function f and that is your output. So, what you are seeing is actually a nonlinear map from input vector x i to output y. Here in this case we have a single input, you can have also multi output if you take more nodes here, but we are talking about a single neuron a single neuron has a single output, but multiple inputs. Inputs are multiple for a single neuron and output is unique y and this y uh, and the input they bear a nonlinear relationship this f. Neural networks can be built using this single neuron we can use a single neuron and build neural networks. Today, we will discuss about linear neural networks. What is a linear neural network? That is, when I have a neuron whose output is simply w i x i i equal to 1 to n, when I have this expression that is I do not have a nonlinear activation function okay. that is my y is a linear relationship with weight like all of you know just like if I write y equal to m x plus c in two dimensional place this is a linear equation. Similarly, this is two dimensional similarly this is an equation, this input space is n dimensional, output is one more. So, this is a equation in n plus 1 dimensional plane. All right. So, when my neural network output, as I said, when I say neural network, Kindly remember, when I say neural network, it does not have connection with a real neural network. There is no connection. Whereas, when I say neural network in this class, it means always artificial. Uh, only connection between this artificial neural network and real net neural network is these artificial neural network are biologically inspired. That is the only difference. So, now let us say how do we develop a linear neural network. All of you want to study in this course intelligent control. So, it will be nice if I take an example of a control system. 
and then explain to you what is a linear neural network. All of you know that in control system, we always talk about model. Let us talk about a discrete time model. Okay. Y k is a 1 y k minus 1 plus a 2 y k minus 2 plus b 1 u k minus 1 say. So, if I have such a dynamical model and I want to feed this dynamical model to a system about which I have some a priori knowledge that the system is second order. So, this a priori, this is a priori, this knowledge is a priori and I use this a priori knowledge, I put forth a model but what I do not know is A 1, A 2 and B 1. These parameters I do not know and I want to identify. What I do? Now, I observe the input and output from the system and try to fit this model using this data and try to identify A 1, A 2, B 1. Now, the objective is how do I solve this problem using a neural network and since this model is linear. I will use a linear neural network. So, what I will do in my neural network obviously, I will have a single neuron because this is a only single output. I do not need more number of neurons here only single neuron and I have three input as I said you before the, the inputs are y k minus 1, y k minus 2, u k minus 1 these are the input. So, I put it here u k minus 1, y k minus 1 and y k minus 2. These are three inputs and I connect these three input through three weights w 1, w 2 and w 3 and I add them. So, obviously, my y is w 1 u k minus 1 plus w 2 y k minus 1 plus w 3 y k minus 2. And whereas, my actual system is supposed to behave as a 1 y k minus 1 plus a 2 y k minus 2 plus b 1 u k minus 1. A 1, a 2, b 1 they represent system parameters. I would like to know what are these parameter a 1, a 2, b 1. So, what I do? I keep this model and this model is sitting in my computer and to the computer I feed this data u k minus 1, y k minus 1, y k minus 2 at every instant to the model that is sitting in my computer and what is the actual output of the system y given y k minus 1, y k minus 2, u k minus 1. So, I, I give this data to this model and I have to develop a methodology to update my weights w 1, w 2, w 3 in such a manner that finally, my w 1 becomes b 1, w 2 becomes a 1, w 3 becomes a 2. So, the objective is find a learning rule which you can say also as weight update rule. 
such that such that W 1 converges to B 1, W 2 converges to A 1 and W 3 converges to A 2. These are actual system parameter and these are your neural network weights. I hope the problem is very clear to all of you that I want to now identify these weights w 1, w 2, w 3. So, how do I do it? So, this is called a propeller this learning rule is derived using popular gradient descent rule. What is gradient descent rule? When I try to learn the weights, the objective is always the objective is to minimize a cost function. That is the objective. I want to minimize a cost function. If I can minimize this, so now your y is w i x i and in this case i equal to 1 to 3 for this example, but generally this i equal to 1 to n, you have n weights. But in our case, the example that we took for a second order model, you have only three parameters to weigh to identify that is w i. So, what you are given now you are given a training set, you are given a training set. What is a training set? Now, I have y k minus 1, y k minus 2, u k minus 1 and y k. So, this is my input and this is my output y k. So, I do some experiments on my system. I give various input here k equal to you know you can see here I can define k equal to say 2, k equal to 3, k equal to 4 and so on. So, what I am doing I generate some random input or some input I generate here and correspondingly I have some initial values of y k minus 1 some initial values of y k minus 2. So, when I put that values my system gives when I give u k minus 1 my system gives y k and I go on giving to the system various input and I get what are the various output here and I know also what are the previous output y k minus 1 y k. Once I know what is y k that my system is actuating or six, the system output is I know also what is y k minus 1 y k minus 2. So, this data I am getting from my system this is called system data and this data this system data also can be obtained from simulation if you can assign a model to the system. This also you can do. So, that is in computer what I will do I am given y k equal to a 1 y k minus 1 a 2 y k minus 2 plus b 1 u k minus 1. I will generate some random input here u k minus 1. 
say 0 to 1 and I give this input to this system. I have some values a 1, a 2 and b 1 because I have some idea about the system. I know the system, so a 1, a 2, b 1, so I generate data by just simulating the system. I just put the value k equal to 2, 3, 4, 5 to n and then compute what are y 2, y 3, y 4. So, this point is very clear to you that first part generate training data. So, our model is sigma w i x i. So, I am generating data y and x. So, once I have this data, I define a cost function. What is this cost function? So, the cost function A is normally given as y d minus y p, this is p whole square sigma i equal to 1, sorry p equal to 1 to n. So, what is meaning of that? My actual system gives me the output y d p and the neural network gives y p. Okay? So, again to help you to remind my y p is sigma w i x i p. So, this is my p th input pattern and p s input pattern gives me output y p using the neural network weights w i and these weights are not they do not correspond to the actual weight we want to identify this weight and the system provides an output y p d the actual system and in our case the actual system was that is y p d k is a 1 y k minus 1 plus a 2 y k minus 2 plus b 1 u k minus 1. So, this is my actual system and this actual system gives me a value y p d k and the neural network provides me y p corresponding to this values y k minus 1, y k minus 2, u k minus 1 and a, diff, a specific instant k. So, what is the objective? Objective is that I give my neural network these weights, uh, these inputs, the, the, the patterns, various input pattern and look at, let us look at what is the neural network output y p and I compute this output y p for p equal to 1 to n and I find what is e. The objective is this e should be minimum. Now, you see this e which I am writing as sigma y p sorry y d p minus y whole square. I missed this half earlier as that is a customary because normally the energy function is written as half m b square from that this half is coming here. So, half y p d minus y square p equal to 1 to so n patterns. So, you, you will see that this is actually a function p equal to 1 to n and this is a constant because this comes from the system y p d system provides this output and my actual output is a function of weight. 
So, that is weight factor W. I can write like this, this is this I can write as as I write W i x i. So, in essence my cost function solely depends on neural network weights. All right. I hope you understand now that my cost function solely depends on neural network weights. Why? Because given input and output, everything is known except the weights of the neural network. So, the cost function because y p d is known, x i is known because it is given, y p d is known because that is given. So, what else is left unknown here? Only weights. So, how do I weight update these weights such that my cost function obviously what you would like? You would like given any input x i my y p should be exactly as that of y p d that is my neural network output should exactly follow what is the desired output of the system. So, that is the objective. objective neural network output. So, the objective is that I have neural network output y p from p equal to 1 to n, this is neural network output and my system output is y d p p equal to 1 to n this is my system output and neural network output should follow the system output this implies my e as I defined earlier y d p minus y p whole square hmm, half sigma p equal to 1 to n. So, this function should be minimized I hope you understand this this is the key you must know before design any designing a neural network what you are going to do that is the most important point and here what I am saying this y p the neural network output should follow the system output y p d. So, when you understand this my cost function that I have defined that must be minimized. So, why do you do what do how do we do it? So, question is how do we minimize So, this we follow gradient descent rule. What is gradient descent rule? Gradient descent rule I plot E with respect to W. I already told you that E is solely a function of weight this cost function is solely a function of weight and I want to see how this E varies with W and what we are considering now only a linear neural network. Remember we are only considering a linear neural network and for linear neural network the normal kind of curve that you will find for any kind of linear system E versus W this we will also discuss later in detail. But now you just understand normally you can also try you try taking some linear function and define E and W do a computer simulation and plot E versus W 
you will find a kind of concave function having one global minimum. Hope this is clear to you. All right. So, this is a normal uh, curve that I get when I plot E versus W. Of course, W is n dimensional because I have n dimensional weight and that means this whole uh, plot will be n plus 1 dimensional, but I, I cannot see things in n plus 1 dimensional. So, for the sake of clarity, I am showing you that how E is a function of W in two dimension, all right, in only two dimension. So, let us see the weight. What I am doing here at this point, I am drawing a slope and at this point I am drawing a slope and you can see that if I draw a slope here, this is a positive slope and this is a negative slope. A positive slope and a negative slope, all right. The objective is how do I update my weight so that my weight I can find this weight this is the mean this is the global minimum and this global minimum this weight I have to find out how do I find. So, imagine that you have a neural network you start from blind you are completely blind what are the weights. So, you may be anywhere here or you may be anywhere here either in the left as to the right or left of the actual minimum weight that you are looking for. The objective is that what is the method by which you can come from any position you are situated in the beginning to the actual position the minimum weight. The gradient descent rule says if I update my weight nu equal to w old eta in this manner if I do it then I can easily come to this particular point. How do I do it? You just look at this learning rule. What is this learning rule? Now, I am now situated here according to this learning rule d del E by del W is a positive quantity here because of positive quantity whatever my w, old W new W will be less because you will subtract. If I am here, my old W is here, I have a negative slope. So, because of that, this weight of that algorithm will add something positive to the old quantity because of negative slope. So, this is negative, there is a negative sign, this becomes positive. So, what is happening? Whether you are here, if you are here, you are moving in this direction, if you are here, you are moving in this direction. So, using this algorithm you always tend to come to a point or towards the direction where my optimal weights are there. All right. So, now the simple formula is how do I derive my algorithm? This is my algorithm now. I gave you the principle, now I will derive given E is half y d p y p whole square p equal to 1 to n. So, obviously, what I will do del E by del W. So, obviously, my uh, I will put it here i because this is a vector. So, del E by del y i w i is half ok I write like this. So, this is my del y p del y p over del w i and this has to be some present it. I have a for a, a specific pattern p I have a term and I differentiate that term with respect to w i 
that is del E by del Y P, del Y P by del W I, because Y P D is a constant term. And I have such n terms, so naturally I will try to compute this term P equal to 1, 2, I can write this one as W del E 1 by sorry this is simply E 1. So, this term I can say simply E i or E p, p equal to 1 to n, this is my term E equal to my error square for n patterns and when I differentiate the total E with respect to W i, I get a term like this, hope you are clear and if I do that, I find out uh, del y p by del w i is simply x i that is because y p is sigma w i x i over i and del e p by del y p is the half is there then 2 will come from the square and p d minus y p okay. and because with respect to y p you have to multiply minus. So, you finally land with a term like this. Okay. So, the final equation is you have the final equation is uh, your w i nu is w i old plus eta, you remember this eta becomes plus because I have a negative sign y d p p into x i and this pattern will be there, this is the pth pattern and sigma p equal to 1 to n. So, this is my total uh, the, the learning algorithm that I talked about. So, let me summarize what we discussed today. So, we had a cost function of this form, this is for individual cost corresponding to each pattern, this is the total cost for n patterns and we use the gradient descent rule, I explained to you how using this gradient descent rule, wherever you may be in your weight space, you will always go to the global minimum and we derived the learning rule that is for batch update y i nu equal to y i old eta delta, delta is y d p minus y p that is delta and this is input x i p. So, this is my general form and there is actually oh there is a, again uh, here is a mistake there is a sigma and when I make it instantaneous update that means, I simply imp, uh, use this del E p by del W i, then I have this simple rule that is my instantaneous update. So, what is the difference between instantaneous update and batch update? The instantaneous update is often much faster especially when the training set is redundant contains many similar data point. Instantaneous update can be used when there is no fixed training data, new data keeps coming. Also instantaneous update is better at tracking non stationary environment. Instantaneous update introduces noise in update process and this noise in the gradient can help to escape from local minima. So, now let us see how to select this eta. If you take small eta, you can see this in this surface, you slowly go towards the global minimum, this is called slow convergence. In the contrary, if you take a very high value of eta, you diverge, you diverge. So, eta has to be fixed heuristically 
in such a way you your convergence speed is optimal as well as you go towards the global minimum that is the objective. Now, we will end this section or this lecture by taking an example. We will take a first order system y k equal to 0 0.8 y k minus 1 0 0.2 u k minus 1. This is my actual system. I generate data using this system. You can do a simulation experiment to generate this data from the air. Then I have this neural network where w 1, w 2 are unknown. In the beginning, I take these initial weights to be random, very small values between 0 and 0 0.1. And then, if you use the gradient descent rule, you finally reach w 1 equal to 0 0.8, w 2 equal to 0 0.2. And you can see that w 1 0 0.8 matches here 0 0.8, w 2 0 0.2 matches here 0 0.2. So, that is you have exactly identified the system. Now, obviously, your actual system and neural network the response is same obvious. Now, let us see if we plot the E versus W, you will see you have a concave like a function here and the minimum is exactly at 0.8 W. Okay. When I plot the E versus weight which is the coefficient of y k minus 1. So, what we did in this class today, we explained how the artificial neural network models are being developed, being inspired biologically and today we discussed linear neural network. We discussed linear neural network in the context of system identification, because this is a course on intelligent control. and I hope you are familiar with the system identification problem. So, I give you two assignment in this lecture. Problem 1, consider two one dimensional classes that have a common variance equal to 1. Their mean values are as follows, mu 1 equal to minus 10, mu 2 equal to plus 10. Obviously, the two classes are linearly separable. Design a classifier that separates these two classes. This is the first problem. Second problem is the extension of the example that we discussed today. That is, a second order discrete time system is given by the following equation. You simulate this equation, generate data, input data and output data. Then identify the following neural network model, where w 1, w 2, w 3, they have to be identified. And please solve this problem, till then, goodbye.